Uh, we should have sound now. Uh, the gremlins, they strike. Yes. Right, morning, Douglas. Uh, Kevin, you got sound now? Hope so. Let's see. Someone let me know if we've got sound. Speak up. Hold on, let's do an adjustment here. Technical adjustment. We'll move the mic stand a little bit. That's better. Good. Yeah, our little gremlins. The little uh, gremlins. The little computer gremlins. They bit and bit hard. Yes. But, hopefully, you've got a stream. Hopefully, you can hear and see me. And looking at comments, people are saying good morning. So, good morning, everybody. We've just managed to scrape in for 10 o'clock. Uh, it was one of those... Uh, click, 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 lose it, click, 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 lose it again, click, 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 got it, lost it, um, but we're here, we're here, we're live, it's Saturday, and it's 10 o'clock, a bit like Cracker Jack, really, but that was 5 o'clock on a Friday, you remember Cracker Jack? Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to do a bit of wet turning and turning thin with the aid of a light, so... Hence, can you see the light? Hopefully, you don't see just the light. Because if you see just the light, it means the pots come flying off the lathe. Uh, and we don't want that to happen. But I've got a backup piece of wood. So, here is our wood today. Now, this is a bit of sycamore. And it's been in the freezer. Uh, a little trick I learned from Jay Richardson, a fine, fine artist in wood. Um, and if you get nice, fresh cut sycamore or wood that you want to preserve and keep it in its state, freeze it. Uh, so, I'm looking up. Morning, Charlotte. Morning, everybody. I keep saying good morning. So, I pre-turned uh, uh, some cylinders back in beginning of 19 um so the wood's still wet it's been out overnight defrosting um and this gives us our blank so all we're going to do is a little hollow form so first things first we uh, just mount it between centers the uh duck thing this is how prepared we are this morning even the uh duct is going to get in the way uh, just to set my stab I'm going to give it a tap through the headstock make sure she's gripped do this tweak there and we should be good to go and just bringing the tool rest up slight gap I want to cut on centre so about there turn it by hand make sure she runs free Turn the lathe speed down, and now we'll set the cameras up, um, because you wouldn't have seen a lot of that, I've just realised. Let me do that, bring that down to there. Right, now you should have a picture of the blank. So, I've mounted the blank between centres, give the um, stab a tap through the headstock just to set it, brought me tool rest up, make sure she's free spinning and we've got no... Uh, Danger of catching. The old safety specs are on. And now we're going to look at just bringing in a bit of shape and getting a mountain. So I'm turning the lathe on, standing out the way. I'll stand over this way, that's out of the way. Uh, turn the speed up. She's running okay. And we're about there. You might get headache at the moment. Joe's jiggling the camera around. So, we just turn the speed up. Now today, the paint, uh, the monitor is not going to get covered in paint. It is going to get severely covered in water. So if it all goes bang, it means there was too much water. So we've got the speed up here to about a thousand. 
I'm just going to true this blank up a little bit. It should be alright. The handle's low. Just run along here. there's our fine cut nice and round so now we'll start putting some shaping so I've got my handle to my right rub the back of the bevel lean my handle away from the lathe pick up the cut and just twist round to get some shape and you can see the shavings like little ribbons We're just going to bring our top round here somehow. I'm just going to get a rough shape into this before I put it into a chuck. Now, we come round to the bottom where we're going to make our spigot. I've just got to move my expensive mic stand. That, up. that was in the way. I keep putting my gadgets down, don't know where I'm putting them. Uh, I'll pick the cut up. And now I'm just leaning into the lathe with my right hip. Raise the handle a little bit. To get the bottom curve in and I'll make the spigot down there. When you're wet turning, you can have some great fun creating some really nice streamers. Um, now, can't remember what camera is what. Let's have a look. It's not that one. That one. Uh, and I don't know if you're going to see this too well. If Joe just the cameras, I'll show you a bit of fun you can have shooting shavings around your workshop. Uh, just bring this one up and back a bit. Or that one just so we get a more wider view. Right, Joe's just adjusting the camera. So if I use the side of my gouge, rub it, roll it over, and then get some speed into this. You can fly your shavings all over the workshop. Uh, come that way and now I'll come back again little rub yeah so if you're really uh, tidy minded you could mount your bin where you're going to shoot your shavings to save sweeping up but of course me being me I don't do that so, we're just bringing a bit more shape into this. Just off the tip a bit. Somewhere there. And just coming off the tip. There, and then we're going to come back the other way. Be in there somewhere in a minute. Uh, and now we need to start getting a spigot point in so we can refine our shape. We're just going to have a simple curved sort of pot. And we're going to take this right to finish today. Now this is wet wood and you're going to say, well you can't do that. Well, I'm going to show you how you do do that. So, let me knock that spigot bit down a little bit. There. And now we start coming in for the bottom. I'm just marking out 
step at a time. Me bit of waste wood. Hold on. Soaked. Yeah, we've got that. Okay, so I'm just marking out this little waste wood here and me spigot. I'll clear that in. Because it's wet, the wood might try and move. So I'll make the spigot a bit deeper. And the only reason I'm making it deeper is not the size of the form, is because the wood is still soaking wet. It's as if it's been fresh cut. So, where I shot my shavings is all over my shelf where my calipers and that are. So I've got to unbury them. Bit of forward planning would have been good. Uh, my jaws, around about 46 mil. And then, left hand point, <coughs> straight, right hand point, eyes it in. That's where my spigot's gonna be. Uh, my hands are in the way, obviously, but there to there. So now, the famous threaded skew. We've just cut our spigot. Now I want this about 12 mil deep, 11 mil deep. And I've got uh, 12 mil there. So that's me spigot depth. Just double checking that. That's right. Yeah, I've got 15. So that'll be about right. So I'm just going to bring this in with a skew to that line. Raising the angles I'm pushing up to the line. And it's really good fun working with wet wood. It cuts nice and easy off the tool. Make sure that's square on the bottom there. And now we just adjust this to flatten it out a bit. Just want a little taper on there. Just gonna work that down so that just gives us a shallow, shallow taper to fit the jaws. Should be it about there. Make sure I'm clean in there. And we'll just check that with a straight edge. Nice and flat, looks flat. Now we want to create a bit of waste. Do about there. That's the dead area. Just want a shoulder for the jaws to fit on really. Somewhere there. Okay. So now I can continue. Turn that down. We're putting a bit of shape into the bottom before we go into the jaws. So, here we go again. So just bringing this around, tucking the bottom under, down to that shoulder. I'm looking at the horizon to get this to balance. Raised handles I come round the bottom there. It's not too sad. Uh, and then we just come round. You can't see the water on your camera, but I'm getting soaked. Just a little bit off of there. Just want to tuck this bottom under a bit more. I'm going to come in the other way. Create myself a gap so I can get round a bit more. Somewhere there. Right, so now I think we're ready. Go into the chuck. Into the chuck we go. So, let off the towel stop. Pull that out of the way. Move that out of the way. 
Some might say it'd be better if I was out the way, but unfortunately you're stuck with me all the time you're going to watch the screen. So, out comes the stud. Over comes the chuck. And we sit the chuck down on there and make sure she's going to sit nicely, which it looks like it is. Just pinch the chuck up. Now we're dealing with end grain. This is like a spindle blank. So I can tighten this chuck up as tight as I want. Is it? Hold on. Oh. Ah. You know what the numpty's not done? What's the numpty not done? Well, I'll show you what the numpty's not done. I never reduced this little mounting point so it's not going through the hole in the back of the jaw numpty so the numpty has now got to put it back between centers like so just quick and I just want to take that nib there that the live center is picking up on down to a size that will fit in the back of the jaws. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again, as they say. Right, now, jaws back on. I'll put me chuck key somewhere safe. Oh, it's behind you. There we go. And let's just tighten this up. Give that a tighten up and make sure that's better. I thought I'd cut my shoulder all right. Um, forgot about the little nub where the live centre was picking up. Knock out our drive, spin our chuck onto the lathe, there, uh, and then I'm just going to lock the tail stock off. And I've lost my C-spanner. I normally use a C-spanner to make sure this is tight. So, I'll just give it a... No, I won't. Let me just undo that. And then I'll give it a lock on by hand. That'll be tight enough. That's it. Normally, we spend uh, 10 minutes or so wandering the man and making sure he thinks here. And today with the computer gremlins, that didn't happen. So even though I'm in a chuck, I'm just gonna bring that towel stock up for a minute, just as a bit of extra security, and make sure, doubly make sure that I've tightened this chuck down there. Okay, so, because we've just turned it on, uh, mounted it, turn the speed down, turn it on, Slowly turn it up. Make sure she's all good. There. And now we just do a couple of refining cuts to make sure our shape flows. Now I'm just rubbing the back of the bevel and away from the lathe. Lift the handle up a little bit. Don't want to take too much here. Just have to shuffle my feet there. Into there. Now we come back the other way.
just picking the cut up on the bevel and just bring it round, twisting myself into the lathe. Somewhere like that. We want to get it roughly into the shape we want because what we're going to do later in a bit is uh, return the outside. Now, normally, if I'm doing uh, a form with a light, what I would do, turn the outside shape, hollow, and have a light coming down on the outside, shining in, and then I just look inside. But for you, you won't see a thing. So we're gonna do it slightly differently. We're gonna hollow roughly to the same thickness of wall. Then we're gonna put the light inside so you'll see the light, and then we return the outside to take it down. So I'll explain that in a minute. Just going to square the top off. Now the tool is not cutting very well. Not that it's blunt, it's now covered in sap. So it's time to change the tool. And you can see how easy that cuts now. It wasn't cutting at all because the sap on wet wood just sticks so there we have the outside shape top squared off and now time to drill a hole so right, I'm still winding the quill morning Mike well uh, forcing a bit, that'll do us into there. Turn that down. Turn the lathe speed down. We're going to drill this out at around about 700 or so. And I never check my depth line. Because I know none of you would like to see me come through the bottom of this. Right to that line there. Bring up my towel stop, turn the lathe on, support with one hand, just wind this in, Don't forget to back wind, otherwise this will build up behind the cutter and you won't get it out. The voice of experience, huh? I think in my turning, I've only turned three goblets. Um, one of which was on a course with the great Stuart Mortimer. Um, now, I can show you that goblet because I've still got it. Sharpen your forcing a bit. Right, hold on. Let me show you something. Might be a second. Uh, can you look upstairs? You know where we've got that, uh, the books and that? 
the rack where the belts are. Yeah. On there somewhere is a little fine goblet yeah. that I did with Stuart. I'm still with you. I'm just getting something to show you. Okay. I'm back. You is back. Okay. Your falsner bits. Now this is a sawtooth type falsner. You can see that on the camera there. Uh, these are more difficult to sharpen. You've got to keep these sharp. Oops. Give it a wipe. Um, you've got to keep these sharp. If they get blunt, you're really using a file. But all you do to sharpen them is put the card, you see that, in that angle flat there. And just do this. Come round the other side. Lay it on. And do this. Circular motion, simple as that. And that will bring the burr back up on there. And it will keep it sharp. Now the best idea is to sharpen them after each use. Uh, and just keeping that sharp. If you find you're not bringing the burr up. Get yourself some sort of file and be a bit more aggressive with this. But you've got to bring this bird just up there on the top. And that's all you need to do. Um, I'm fortunate that I've got a set of Colts. Uh, and they sharpen much better. In exactly the same way though. This angular face here. Just like that. And like that. And that keeps them sharp. So if you keep them sharp. You can cut at 500 RPM uh, and your smoking and burning is because your falsen has got blunt. There endeth your sharpening lesson for the day. So, glasses back on. Bring the cutter back. See, now that's getting stuck in there already. Let's get that into there, that's better. Slide it in and then we're on we go again. Now the deeper I go, the more frequently I'll pull the falsener back out of the hole. Because we don't want that shaving building up behind. Sort of going down 10 mil ish at a time. Bring her back. Yeah. Uh, the card was a James Barry diamond card. I like James's diamond cards. They're nice and thick. They're not very. They don't flex. Some of the cheaper ones flex. Obviously available from Oliver's Wood Turning. <laughs> so we're nearly down to our line. That there. And then that's our depth hole drilled, ready for hollowing. I've kept the shape quite simple, not too complicated, and it's not because I'm simple. Would it be worse than the uh, It will cut easily with the false in a bit. Um, the question was, would it be worse when the wood is wet? It cuts easy wet wood. What will happen is the shavings are expand. Uh, in there and get a bit stickier so it could trap the falsener a lot easier so just be mindful 10 mil bring it back out 10 mil bring it back out that's the best way right we'll just adjust this hollow form around a little bit there now the reason i do this is just easier i find if you've got a rotating head stop when you're hollering just to bring it out so you give yourself a bit more room there and we just use our 
little 6 mil carbide cutter and I'll just adjust my tool rest. Now I want to cut the wood, if you look at it face on, just below centre at about 8 o'clock and I roll my cutter over to about 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock is a good way to start. Bring that back a bit. Just so I'm on a solid round bar. A little bit lower. There. And now I'm about 8 o'clock, just below centre. And we cut as tilted over to about 8 o'clock. And turn our speed up a bit. We run it around about 1200, something like that. And we just come in. Just lightly, and all I'm doing now, picking up that cut, and just rocking the body in towards the lathe, Now even these cutters can get a bit blocked up with the sack. A what? A pet fever. Yeah, they're quite good. Only trouble is they don't know when to stop. Here we go. This is a cutter, so it's a little round cutter it's so small you cameras this one let's see can you see that there just a little round cutter on the end so it's not a scraper it's actually a cutter yeah okay back to the job in hand Away. Just that rock in to the lay. This is the Simon Oak Pro Carbide Ball. It's my favourite hollering tool. Uh, I've got all sorts, but I think this does a really good job. some of these shavings that are building up now this is easy because it's quite a large opening for what we're doing today so I can scrape them out uh, so no need for the noisy vacuum while I'm there I'll just check my depth see how I'm doing at the moment we're hollowing to around about 10 12 mil just to get the rough shaping shape running round now we can go back in I've got a bump here if you're gentle you can fill your bump so you can iron them out Just check that. 
You can see how quickly you can remove the shavings with this. Uh, they're getting stuck in the bottom and I can't reach them. So, the easy option, excuse me a moment, I'll just get an airline because it's wet wood. Just get an airline, it's all tangled up. Nearly there. Turn the compressor on. Can't hear that one, can you? Silent. They're all bambi. They haven't got a lot of oomph, but they're nice and quiet. Oh dear, for this. So I'm just cupping my hand over the end as I blow this shaving out. Wet, so it's not going to cause a dust. It'll be a little bit, but not a lot. There, and now I can see where I'm at. There, drop that hose out of the way. I've got about. Do you ever hollow out with the lathe in reverse so you can see what you're doing without risk of? No, no, I don't. Um, there, there are a few turners that will do that. Hang on. All oh, right. Okay. The question was, do I ever hollow out with the lathe spinning on reverse on the opposite face so I can see what's going on? My answer is no, I don't. There are a few turners that do it. Um, and I can see their idea behind it that you can see inside. You've got to, if you do that, make sure you've got a chuck with grub screw mountings on the back and tighten them grub screws down onto the collar because the chuck can come undone and if you're new to hollowing there's a good chance you're going to get a few catches and if you get catches with your lathe spinning in reverse hollowing on the opposite face without that grub screw or a couple of grub screws locking that collar down onto the spindle one thing's going to happen is that chuck's going to come undone and not only have you got a bit of wood flying around your workshop, you've got a chuck that weighs a few pounds. Uh, and trust me, if that was to hit you, you'd know all about it. It's quite easy to do it the proper way, or turning how a lathe should turn. Uh, and, you know, if you start with a big open vase, uh, you can see inside and... Get used to the feel of the tool. And then once you've got used to the feel of the tool, start closing the neck over. Uh, because it's more about feel. All wood turning is about feel. So I'm coming in here now. I can feel where my hole is. And I can just bring this tool back. So I don't have to see in there. I'll double check that. I think I'm at my bottom mark. Yeah, we're at the bottom, so I just want to tidy up the bottom now. Couple of fine cuts, so I haven't got any marks in the bottom. Famous last word. So I can literally, very lightly, run the cutter down the inside of the pot on the outside without actually cutting anything and I'll just get down to that bottom mark there just feel I'm picking it up and then I'll just come around that curve something like that and that's me bottom tidy there as simple as that now what I'm going to do is use a caliper. This caliper's a bit big. I'll just get the smaller one. Hold on. 
Cheers, Joe. My assistant has just passed the caliper. So, I'm there down to around about 12 mil there. I'm still thick there, midpoint. I'm about 20 mil. And at the bottom, I'm about 20 mil. So I need to take a bit out the bottom. I want to get the wall thickness to an even sort of 10 mil. So I get down the bottom there again. No. Right, question. Do you need to resharpen the 6mm cutter? This little 6mm cutter is carbide. You're not really going to sharpen that. If it gets blunt, there's a little uh, torque screw in there. Let it off, turn the cutter around just a tad, lock it back down again and sort of go round the clock with the cutter. Once it's done, just replace it. You, you, I suppose you could sharpen them if you're that way inclined with a diamond card, I reckon I'd probably do more damage to me than it's worth. So just replace them is the answer. And next question. What is the silent air compressor? All oh, right, the silent air compressor is a Bambi. B-A-M-B-I. Uh, silent compressors. They work off a fridge motor so they're not that powerful you get about one cfm per pot uh, my big one is a twin pot and i've got a small portable for airbrushing uh which is a single pot and they work fine if you want power then unfortunately unless you're going to spend a fortune uh you've got to use the big industrial compressors so uh, my sandblaster that I keep waffling on about, um, I installed a 14 CFM compressor. Uh, it sounds like a pneumatic drill going off when it's uh, fired up, so I'm going to put some sandproofing around it. But it gives me the oomph to push the sand out to uh, muck about with the wood, and I've been messing around with that. And... We'll do something with that in the future. Right, so I've got me outside down here. I've got to take a chunk out of the bottom there. And I'm down fairly level. A little bump in there that I can see. So I'm just going to take that bump out. And I've just got to do a little bit of adjustment down this bottom bit. The bottom piece here is where you want to be most careful. When we go through the sidewall of a holoform, it's in this. Because we're cutting this way down. We get to the bottom and we come down there, get to the bottom. Then we pick up the bottom and start doing this. Well, we get an overlap about here. 
and if you're not careful that gets exceptionally thin very quickly so a few shavings there and I just want to get down the bottom and level that out a bit it's just right at the bottom Just feeding this cutter in a couple of mil at a time. We've got plenty of wood to play with here at the moment. So we can sort of go at it a little bit, but then once we get down, once we've got our shape right. Once we've got our shape right on the inside, then we can start taking the even cuts to take this down. There's a little bit more at that bottom. We'll take it down to about eight mil or so. Just doing this uh, way round there. There's the bottom bit. When I'm in there, physically what I'm doing is I pick the cutter up, get rid of that, back there, and then I twist myself in to the lathe, and you can see the cutters following the shape of that curve, and it all comes from the twist of the hips. So, um, the other week we demonstrated the jig, uh, so you've got a laser that shows you where you're at. But you can do it freehand, and I do most of my order in freehand. Right, so we're down about there. We're just getting down to our 8 mil there, and I'm a bit wider here. So now I'll start taking a bit of wall thickness out from the top. I'm just guiding the cut around, I'm not forcing it. Shavings, double check it. The old Abbey. There's your twice, cut once. And now we just check this. So we're about 8 mil there, 9 there, about 10 there, 10 there, and about 8 there. So I've just got in this area here to remove a little bit. So I'm about there. Look at them shavings. Can you ask what the secret is for keeping your youthful good looks? And I've replied with, I'm not sure. <laughs> what is it? Uh, what makes you think you know what it is? <laughs> <laughs> I was just born young. So now I'm just working on the top here. I 
I don't want to hear any real noise as I come thinner. Not me personally come thinner, the wall thickness. down to about six mil there six there five there so I've got a little ridge I can see it in here so I'll get rid of that ridge right that cut is binding a little bit I'm just gonna try dropping this just a tad and we might turn the speed down just a little bit to about 800. So I'm trying not to put any real pressure on the cutter. Five there, five there, five and a half there, five there, about eight there. So we're about eight, about this point here. I've got lines of go well on my uh, turning tool, so I know roughly where I'm going into. So that's about there. just a bit thick in the bottom section now so I want to get down that bottom that there seven and then we get thick right at that bottom bit I'm just going to run the cutter down now the body I'm just 
thrashing the cutter around in there. Fingers crossed we should be somewhere near it. Five, four, bottoms out. So, we're somewhere near it. And now what I'm just going to do is take a little bit more out the side. Who? Well, I hope not. I didn't come with five pre-prepared pieces. Yeah, good wood. I always recommend sycamore uh, for any beginning pieces. It's nice tight grain uh, and it cuts well and it gives you a good sort of start really. All right, we're just checking that. There we're about somewhere near where we want to be. Now, what I would do normally at this point is I start shining a light on the outside and keeping an eye on it as I went down. But what we're going to do here is we want to keep this shape. So hopefully I've got the inside about right. This foot will tuck under a little bit more. Uh, and we're going to turn the outside so you can see the effect of turning with a light. We're down to about four millish as we are. So now I'll remove my little hollowing tool. Bring me towel stock back up into play. Just need to move that camera. Whoop. Get that off and out. Okay, bring the camera back. Somewhere there. Got that. And we bring our headstock back round to parallel ish. Don't have to be. Married up, we're not uh, turning between centers now. We are off the chuck. Just bring me tool rest in. Then we're going to bring in our light. This is a little LED light. Uh, got a bung on the end and it fits into the quill. We can then bring this up. We're doing technical adjustments with the camera. Bring this up and turn the light on. And we can see there, we're a little bit thinner there. And you can just see the light. Now you should be able to pick that up on the screen. So this was our danger area, we were getting a little bit thinner. We're about four mil here, and uh, we're around about four and a half, something like that here. So now we can turn from the outside. Now one of the tricks to use, he says, and I don't know where it's gone, we need it, spray bottle. Right oh, there. Now these are LED, low voltage light, you ought to be careful. So I'm going to keep the wood wet. It's got a big, tr uh, big trunk of plum tree that was spelled four weeks ago. Yeah, you could yeah. use plum. Would it be okay to use wet yet? Yeah, do it straight away. That that would be quite good. Part turn it. It won't necessarily stop uh, it splitting. You could if you use um, turn it thin sort of around about four or five mil should give you thin so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring the tool up rub the bevel and this is where you've got to be gentle because we are thin and follow the shape we had on the outside on the inside outside
I could have done, yeah. Joe just said, when I said inside outside, he said, I thought you were going to start singing 515 now. By the Who. I'm a great Who fan. So we're just doing a little bit at a time. Following our original shape. You can see the shavings that I'm taking are quite fine. Now this does work better doing it the other way round. Getting your outside shape how, exactly how you want it. And then hollering with a light shining down onto it. But it's rubbish for demos. Uh, the LED lights are from John at Wood Art Products. Now, hold on, let me just do this cut. Now, I mustn't push here. I'm just brushing this cutter around. Eh? Hey? Now, it's not as clear on the camera. We're going to bring the camera in. Mike, you know what I forgot to do? Is, oh, how's that? That's better, isn't it? We'll try that. I'll turn in darkness. So you can see now we're going amber here. Uh, it looks a bit brighter, I think, on the screen. But now we're getting down to our wall thickness. You can see a dark line right on the top. So that piece of wood's a bit thicker there. So I'm just going to take that bit down. And this, when it starts getting thin, will dry out quite quickly, so keep it moist. So now I'm going to start working back. I'm going to leave enough wood so I can adjust the shape should I have to and you should be able to see this dark line slowly disappear now I'm not pushing hard now this is a good thing to do if you want to learn how to control your gouge, you make sure they're sharp. I'm swapping over to the first gouge this morning. You make sure they're sharp. Have no real pressure. And you just brush out the dark lines. What you're trying to do is make this light an even shade there you are going to get a bit of distortion through the end grain and the side grain so you've got to take an average but you can see in this area here it's nice and even and this area here it's a bit darker so you take an average so we'll just carry on a little bit more we'll just come back a little bit Take the next set of cuts. I'm still twisting my body into the lathe and I'm just brushing the cutter around the shape. I've got a little bump there, but you've got a dark line. So this is, you know, half a mil or less. We just brush that round. Now come down to this bit.
And now you can see we're getting somewhere near it. We've got a thick piece just here, but it's not that thick. And a bit in the bottom, which will really shape. I'm just going to soak this up a bit more. Every time I do this, though, it's like having a shower. And what I might have to do, I had three tools sharpened for this. But I might have to go and sharpen a tool because the wet wood, the sap, is starting to clock up the cutting edge. And I cannot afford to start pushing the tool. So if the tool won't cut on its own nicely, then it's a sharpen. So quick sharpen. I won't be a second. Well, I might be a second, you know. Uh, shout out if you want to say anything. Joe's reading. There's a two-in-one coming up. You're about to have a small lampshade and a nice small bowl. <laughs> Who's comment for that? Oh, um, uh, Derek. Uh, Derek's a master of lampshades and bowls. They start as oliforms, and they think that's the way to do it, I think. That's the way to do it. And so, Mike, one guy's done. And Mike said when he comes to visit, he'll show you how not to get the project finished. I was um, talking to Mike the other day, uh, Mike Walt this is, uh, well known turner on YouTube, uh, I hate to say it in public but a really nice bloke and we were saying what would be good fun when this lockdown thing is over, carrying on these live demos but getting a couple of us together uh, and have like a two-man live demo or something. So that might be a plan for the future. So Mike, if you come down, we're going to go thin wall turning. I'm going to do the first bit. You're doing the second bit. <laughs> right. Now I've left that for a while. So wet it up. Now when you do this sort of work, you've got to go to finish. You can't sort of leave it overnight. Uh, if you do want something comes up and you're going to leave it, a good idea, uh, and I learnt this, I did uh, a day with Andrew Hall making a hat, um, and you get a towel, soak it and lay a wet towel over it if you're going to leave it for half an hour or something, just to keep it from drying out, because this will dry out really, really quickly. Funny little story. I went on a hat turning course with Andrew Hall, uh, organised. That sounds unfair. Uh, that sounds unfair. What's that? Your comment. Oh, Mike. Yeah. No, I think that's very fair, Mike. Anyway, so I went on this turning course uh, to make a hat with Andrew Hall. Um, I went. A, I was interested in making a hat and meeting Andrew, and also. I wanted to see his techniques for thin turning and I'd used a light and different bits and pieces but you never stop learning and we've all got different techniques so I went to Andrew um, as an experienced wood turner so I think there was four or five of us in this course turning these hats and we were rolling them out with bowl gouge all this sort of stuff and the only person to dismount the piece of wood from the lathe was yours truly. It come clattering off the lathe. Um, anyway, we got it. I got it remounted in the way we went. And at the very end, you have to do some fine bits. And Andrew's got a big light box that goes in that he makes up with a series of LEDs, and it fits in, and you fine tune it. So when we got to it. He said, do you want me to do this cut? He said, I'd never, ever had anybody leave without a hat and I wouldn't let him do it. Uh, and I think poor old Andrew was sweating. But, hey-ho, I've got my hat. Uh, I found it highly amusing. Andrew was really worried. So I'll just bring this shape round here now.
we've got a bit of a bump through here. Give this a squirt up. You can see him fill the bump. Now I do say I think it's much better to do it the other way round. But I want to get rid of that high point there. And all the time I'm doing this, I'm just trying to bring the shape round into balance. And it just shows you what the inside shape was doing. If you're a little bit out, then doing it this way round, it shows up. Now we're quite thin here, so I can't even go back inside. Not comfortably. Uh, to adjust this shape. So I'm just trying to balance it out a little bit. Just brush this cutter around. That's getting it just there. Drop more water on. So this area is a problem because I must have just been a little bit thicker through there. So I'm going to have to live with that a little bit I'm afraid for this demo. When you're doing this on your own in your own workshop you just take a little more time So now we're going to just come round this bottom. That was sand out, I think. So I'm just coming round the bottom now. And this is where we've got to be careful because the light will shine through differently on this end grain. You see we've got a little bump in there that I really can't get rid of. Uh, I might give it a go. because I don't like giving up. We've got flex in the top of the thing because it's thin. I've got a little bump here. It might sand out. This might be one cut too many trying to get this just to resemble a better shape. But... At the end of the day, it's just a piece of wood. So if she decides to go, she goes, and we'd have to do another one. I'm just feeding this gag round the bottom. There. 
See how we run. Now if I was doing this properly, I wouldn't be happy with this little bump here. You can see it. But for our demo, we'll have to live with the little bump. But I'm not happy about it. So, ugh, face full of water. Uh, now have a little cut round here. There. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to sand this. And the best way to sand it, you can see we've got a brighter light just here to here. Yeah. So this is just a tad thinner. Before you sand it, turn the light on. Because someone asked if you could show them how you present the tool. Ah, how I present the tool. So all I'm doing with the tool is literally, with my hand all low... I can rub the bevel at any point and then I just tweak it in the direction of travel. So if I'm rubbing the bevel at the back there, I just lift it and just move the handle sort of that much, hold on, handle that much to get the cut on. And as soon as I feel the cut, I just travel with the tool. Um, if I'm going this way, I rub the bevel at the back there and tilt my handle towards my body just pick the cut up and just take you would take several finer cuts rather than one big cut there yeah. because <coughs> i'm stupid i really don't like this bump this is a might walk special one more cut Now you see that's not cutting, that's full of sap. So I'm already on tool three. Uh, I wouldn't, no. I think you're far better off when you're getting thin like this to use the cutter and get it to cut. Right. Just off the tip there to get into there, like so. Okay. That's a bit better. I can see that it's not quite right, but we'll call that it. Because I don't want Derek seeing a two-part pot. So I'll leave it at half inch thick. Only joking. So if I get a caliper on here, Joe can flick the lights on. <coughs> we'll use the water while we're sanding. Let's get rid of our LED. No, I wouldn't, uh, to be quite honest. Because um, if you're using a scraping cut, if you're using a scraper, uh, I'm thinking about this. I've never used a scraper to do, do this. Would it work? Uh, I think so, um, but but you could you don't know, get it right. I think you. I I'm just far happier using a cutter. Really, I'm waffling now. You know, it might work. The honest answer is I've never tried it. I've always done it this way. I don't really use scrapers that much. So, 
it could work. So what we're going to do now, I'll just show you briefly how to sand. You can sand from both sides. Supporting one hand with the other. If you've got the right touch with the tool, to be honest, if you've got the right touch with the tool, I think you could use any tool. But you've got to be really, really light-handed with it. You can't... There's no room for margin of being a bit heavy-handed with this. You've got to be light. So whatever tool you can use, lightly just soaking that up a bit more because we're drying it out now we're wet sanding so i've got no extraction on yeah that's what i would normally do i get my shape especially if i've got a fairly big entrance I get my shape done on the outside and then I hollow from the inside and then I use a different light, same idea, shining on the outside and then I look in. Now this sanding, This sanding uh, clogs up your sandpaper and you don't want the wood getting too dry too soon. So don't be afraid to keep wetting it. And once you've got rid of your marks, you can let the sandpaper dry the wood out and you'll see dust start raising. Now, if you've got a deep form, instead of putting your hand there, I'm supporting it with my other hand, so I'm okay at this entry level. It's not ideal, but make yourself up some sanding sticks. Um, hold on. Ah, sorry, we might have to go over it. You make yourself up some sanding sticks, something like this, and you can put your sandpaper into the slot, roll it around, and then, I'm all tangled up with cameras and everything here. Uh, now my hand is not, hold on, Joe's gonna move it. Um, so the stick is inside the form and that's the safer way to do it. You shouldn't take the chance really when you're sanding. Especially seeing if it goes bang, you're going to have a sharp edge. So I have to think about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Now, so a sanding stick is the way you should do it. And now, can you see the dust is slowly coming off of this? We're drying the wood out. And we'll just check. Still got a few little marks just in the surface there. So, clean bit of paper. A little bit more water applied. Another shower. Back on here. I've just got a little mark just here somewhere, I just saw there, 
just a little bruisey mark. So now this is clogged up, I can let it dry out and brush it off, or I could use a brass brush to brush it off, but rather than mess around like that, I just want to get the outside sand. I'm not going to sand right down to 600 like I would normally do, um, but just to give you the principle of this. There, and my stick on here, and then Sand off this bottom bit. Got a couple of lines in there. Well, normally I'd follow it down on the inside with my sanding stick. use a uh, inertia reel sander on this just don't push too hard And this sort of work makes a good basis, once you've done it, for piercing and texturing and that sort of thing. There. So. There we've sanded. We've got a little bump here, which is not good. Uh, not what I would normally do. What's the wall? Hold on, the wall thickness is uh, about there. <coughs> right, our wall thickness now. <coughs> Pardon me. Is just one, two mil, two and a half mil. Are you using wet and dry? No, uh, I'm using just ordinary sandpaper. The. Um, Aluminium oxide, this is the cloth back, cling spore. Uh, yeah, it's just, was joke, oh, was it? Uh, missed that, sorry. Um, just normal sandpaper, I'll go away. I'll leave you to have your joke. Um, now, so, what I would do is I'd carry on sanding this until I was happy with it. Uh, this wouldn't be a finished piece with that bump, that would have to go. Uh, and I might go back on the inside or the outside. And if it went bang, then it's no good as it is because it's got a bump in it. If it goes bang, it goes bang. But once we've done this, then what we can do is part this off. Yeah, I'm just checking my depth. Thirteen and a half. Thirteen. I should be about there. I should be safe to part off. We'll find out in just a second. I'm just going to come in here. Oh, 
I'm just overlapping this cut. I don't want this binding up on the parting tool. And I don't want to snap it off. So I might walk to laugh at me again when he does his demo. Uh, which I think is tomorrow night. You have to bring the time up if you're still awake. It's still there. Sorry? Uh, no, if you sand it properly to a proper finish, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it in just a second. It is just another process. So, on to there. I saw that off there. So now what I would do normally is sand this bottom off. It's quite light. You can hear it's light. So if Joe twisted the camera around a bit. Uh, over there. At the mic. At the mic. Big up the mic. Big up the mic. Big up the mic. Don't you mean watch us wreck the mic. Watch us wreck the mic. No, you're not allowed to do stuff on YouTube that everybody knows. Copyright. It's an Oliver original. Right, you're on the microwave. Oh, I'm meant to be on the microwave. Yeah, on the microwave. Not on the mic. Mic. This mic. Mic, mic. That mic. That mic. Got it? Yeah. Okay, so in my workshop, I've got a kitchen. That's not because Karen kicks me out of the house and makes me fend for myself. This is all to do with wood turning. So if you've got a nice, even wall thickness, Pop your finished piece into the microwave. Uh, turn me. Get the dust off there. Put it on for around about 25 30 seconds. We'll go 25. Give it a start. Great. Sing amongst yourselves. And what you'll do is repeat this process. I won't repeat the process because you'll get bored senseless. But so you bring it out, you don't want it getting too hot, okay? So let it cool. We're right there. Let it cool. Uh, and then go again. And it's smoking. You can see the steam coming <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of steam coming up. There's a lot of water in the bottom, but just let it cool. Don't let it get too hot. So maybe that would have been better at 20 seconds, realistically. But I'll just let that cool right down, and then I'll do it again. And then once you've finished, you can land up, and that was done directly from wet wood. This wall thickness is uh, two mil. I think, because someone's bound to ask that in a minute. I could lie and say it's a millimetre, you wouldn't know. Yeah, it's about two mil wall thickness. Um, I couldn't remember, I did it a while ago. But in the microwave, that dried out and is never moved. So that's the way to do it, in a microwave. Microwave you would. Let it cool though, don't let it get too hot, and then go again. And you just repeat it, and you'll see it drying out, uh, and it will stay in shape, nothing will move. I'm trying to see if I can reach another piece, but it's behind this sign. There we go. Nah, it's buried. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Sing amongst yourselves. No, it's right about there in the worst place possible. That here, midway down the sign. Uh, so, and that takes a bit of taking down because it's stuck up with tape and all sorts of stuff. But you can bring them down nice and dry and then you've got either your finished form or you can start piercing it and burning it and texturing it. If you're going to burn and texture something that's two mil, not too hot with a burner because you'll go straight through. Just touch it in. There we have it. Thimble turning with a light without incident. Now, I mentioned during uh, our 
thing that I've not really turned goblets. So I went to Stuart Mortimer to learn how to turn a goblet. And this was done about mm, five years ago, I think, something like that. Uh, just a little thin send, little flow, barley twist stem. Uh, and that was one of my few goblets that I've ever turned. I think I've done three in my turning journey. Uh, I'm not really a great goblet person. Um, so, but it's good to try all things. You'll learn different bits and pieces as you do it. And what I'm going to do is take Mike's advice with the camera and put it on manual focus. I forgot we had other problems, normal sort of stuff. You know, Oliver's demos normally don't run as smooth as silk, do they? We all know that. But hey, as long as we've enjoyed it, um, I'll hang around and chat with you for a while. I'd like to say to everybody before they go, Thank you very much for your support. I appreciate you coming and spending a Saturday morning watching me waffle on and do this sort of stuff. Uh, I appreciate you guys that use Oliver's wood turning. You help us uh, carry on uh, doing what we do. Uh, and I think you are a good crowd. We have a good laugh. And obviously I meet some of you at the other demos in the chat. Um, so, I hope you've enjoyed this morning, and we'll, don't forget to like and subscribe, he never says it, I will, please like and subscribe. Uh, Joe's going, plug the like and subscribe, so, um, that was the Saturday the 13th demo, without incident on the camera, we had a lot of incidents beforehand. Unfortunately, I haven't got a big heavy crowbar in here. Otherwise, I might have been in for a new computer. Yes. So. Okay. Oh, Joe's got them. Just moved the camera around so you can see my smiling face. Um, thank you all. Thanks, Nick. Steve, I'm missing a lot of names here. Thanks, Richard. Cheers, Derek. Robin, glad you enjoyed it. Douglas, thank you. There are a couple of mentions of Walton on the nays earlier. I decided not to tell you because I thought you might get distracted. Uh, thanks, Fred. Twisted. Cheers, Mike. Glad you stayed awake all the way through it. I know you, as you're getting on, you're like a nap now and again. Cheers, Dunk. These are all coming in a bit thick and fast, me. Andy, James, yeah, Andy, Stuart, Derek, thank you. Vicky, thumbs up, lovely, thank you. Cheers, Baz. Thanks, Martin. Mike, well, ah. Uh, did you pop your time up for your demo? It's tomorrow, 6.30 or 7.30, I can't remember. Look on Mike's channel. Uh, you'll see his demos coming up. Cheers, Kevin. Cheers, Simon. Hope you're well, mate. Question. Malcolm, very interesting. Quick, quick question regarding engraving burrs you use. I use the Bosch burrs. They're a jeweler's burr. Uh, and I get them from a company called Betts Metals. B-E-T-T-S, Betts Metals. Uh, and they're Bosch and don't ask me how to spell Bosch because it's a strange it's B-U-R-S-C-H or something like that um, but they're, they're jewellers burrs Mick, Joe and cleaning don't go hand in hand mate they just definitely definitely don't if anybody's cleaning up it'll be me in a while <laughs> Might be next week, week after. I'm trying to make my workshop look like yours, Mick, to be fair. Cheers, Stephen. Glad you enjoyed it. Neil. Ah, oh, you did the goblet, Neil. Yeah, yeah. Great teacher, uh, Stuart Mortimer. I had a cracking couple of days with him. Mike walks on at 7.30. 7.30. 
Um, so join in Sunday evening. Uh, Emma's on this evening. I think she's on at 6.30. Emma the tiny turner, the little one, you know. She has to stand on a box, all that sort of stuff. Um, 6.30, I think, this evening. So you've still got demos coming up. I think Stuart Feen is on as well over the weekend. Uh, there's a few of us do this. Colin, glad you enjoyed it. Ah, Emma's continuing a mushroom. 6.30 tonight. Mick Jews has just put up. Right, fellows. I am about to depart the building. If you're all happy, if you do think you've got a question, thanks, Jennifer. Jennifer, sorry. Thanks, Brian. Uh, I'll leave that for it. If you do think that you've got uh, questions or anything, you're always welcome to drop me a message through uh, Facebook or uh, send me an email to uh, sales at Oliver's Wood Turning. I'll see them and pick them up and respond. Cheers, Brian. Cheers, Jay. Cheers, Mike. Take care. Right. Thank you all. It's been a great morning. Enjoyed your company. Thanks very much for watching. I'm off for a nice cup of tea and a biscuit. Take care. Thank you all.